What's going on, Jerome? It's a beautiful Thursday. Birds are chirping and stuff, and it's time for another Vikings news dump. So, of course, the Vikings take on the Rams tonight, Thursday night football, prime time, and I got a good feeling. I really do. I, I understand the whole two-point blowout loss against the Lions. It is what it is, but back on the horse, taking on the Rams, and they're going to be tough. Even though they've been ravaged by injuries, Stafford, McVay, and company, like they're going to give it, uh, they're going to give it all that they got. And we are certainly after that ass, Maddie. Not, not in a trade though. No, I think that ship has sailed, right? And of course, Kevin O'Connell and Sean McVay. That's going to be the headline uh, that Al Michaels and Herb Street repeat over and over and over again. Also. I have nothing but love and respect for Al Michaels. Uh, I think that he is on the Mount Rushmore of all-time greatest broadcasters. Do you believe in miracles? Yes. He did what? All right, uh, But uh, it, it's clear that he's just hammering out a check for these Thursday night games because he is so thoroughly uninterested. It's just what like you, you, you I feel like you could tell like he's doing like the crossword while he's like, uh, second down, Bo Nix, brr whatever but yeah the number one headline is going to be kevin o'connell sean mcveigh uh koc is the tall version of mcveigh and it's the teacher versus the pupil even though i think they're the same age right also so from the mighty ducks how was america's number one publication doing uh doing up a piece on the front page above the fold uh, about a minnesota peewee hockey matchup between district uh, district five and Dinah? no yeah, it was nailed it, but um, I don't know, <laughs> but that, that, that is going to be the matchup, and I actually do think that O'Connell has an advantage here, because yeah, I mean, Sean McVay knows Kevin O'Connell, Matt Stafford knows Kevin O'Connell, but they know him in an offensive coordinator capacity. And it's a worlds apart uh, from him being a head coach. And everything that they can glean about O'Connell as a head coach, it's only film, right? But O'Connell was in all those uh, uh, meetings with, with Sean McVay for those years uh, about planning, how McVay thinks about things, how he handles himself on game day. Kevin O'Connell saw all of that. Uh, Sean McVay in head coaching capacity. Also, he knows Matthew Stafford. He knows what he likes. He knows what he doesn't like. He knows what he looks for. He knows what he looks to check. He, he knows everything, right? So I actually think it's a huge advantage for the Vikings as opposed to the other way around. Usually there, there's a little bit back and forth, but I think this is purely all, all Vikings. But you have to re respect Sean McVay. I mean, what he's done. Won a Super Bowl, been to two, and, well, didn't get the best out of Jared Goof. But that's nah, whatever. But uh, obviously won a Super Bowl with uh, Kevin O'Connell, which is great. Although I, I will say Sean McVay has won zero Super Bowls without Kevin O'Connell, as we said back in February 2022. Dark yeah. uh, but y y you do have to love the shape of his team. They're always really good. They're always going to be tough. And it's going to be a battle uh, on uh, Thursday night tonight. And also, y you know, the floors and Kevin O'Connell, like, you know, that they're just pissed off. Right. Uh, and you can just tell, like. O'Connell's press conference this week, you could tell like he disappointed, also a little bit pissed off, chip on that shoulder because he could have coached better. Flores on the defense could have done a lot better as well. And now they have this opportunity because all the haters and losers, like say, say the Vikings are still a good team, but they're not counting them amongst the elite, elite, elite. Everyone's talking about, oh, the Lions, oh, the Packers, even oh, the Bears. Oh, my. Now, but Vikings have a chance tonight to reestablish themselves as the numero uno team in the division. It's okay. And also, the Vikings still control their own destiny, right? If they win out, they win the division, they get the one seed, right? People don't want to hear that, but it's going to happen, right? And also, I mean, the Lions have been hot the last couple weeks, sure, uh, but it was a near run thing against the Vikings. They blew out the Cowboys because the Cowboys are ass. They blew out the Seahawks because maybe the Seahawks are ass. I don't know. But the first three weeks, they kind of struggled. Not saying I'm just saying. All right, but take care of your business one week at a time. Also, uh, Rams injury report came out a little bit later uh, last night. Uh, but Troy Reader, or former Vikings legend Troy Reader, uh, is ruled out with a hamstring. Uh, Braden Fisk, uh, the rookie from Florida State, uh, is listed as questionable. Uh, he's been dealing with a back issue, so even if he goes, he won't be 100% because of the short week. Uh, although Jared Verse, a fellow rookie from Florida State, is looking really damn good, leading the team in pressures as well as has two sacks. Uh, Winton is out. Uh, Gallimore, ooh. Was it Gallimore a Viking for a hot second? No. No, but the pride of Oklahoma, uh, he's questionable with a shoulder. Uh, Puka Nakua list as questionable, although I doubt that he plays uh, because he hasn't had a full speed practice since he's been back in. So 
It is what it is. Uh, but Cooper Cup will be playing uh, tonight. He's back from that uh, high ankle sprain. He was listed as full and has no injury designation heading into the game. Also, the starting left tackle, Joe Nopum, uh, is going to be out as well. So, I mean, basically, the entire left side of that Rams offensive line could be yum yum time for Flores and company. Also, we have a controversial take. So the Vikings having some fun boarding the plane uh, yesterday and offensive lineman Walter Rouse, as well as Michael Jurgens, it puts a lotion on the skin. Ah, that felt good to say because, well, not really, but uh, it's been a while since preseason since we talked about Michael Jurgens. All right. And also Levi Drake Rodriguez, free LDR. You want some quick interior pressure? Mm, mm. Uh, but they're lifting up Will Rackard. So it's like three older brothers and, and the little brother. Just hanging out, right? But controversial Beatles take. So I'm not like a hardcore Beatles fan, uh, but I I respect their impact on the music industry and pop culture writ large. But I feel like the most underrated Beatle is George. Oh, my sweet Lord. Hallelujah. John. John's a little bit overrated. He got corrupted by by a a Japanese person. How does he do that? I'm allowed to say that, by the way, because I'm Japanese. Uh, uh, Paul. Paul's pretty damn awesome and Ringo hey Ringo why'd you give up that uh that field goal block against the Raiders in preseason Ringo why'd you do that huh should we call it Pete Best see if he could play, he could play some special teams get the hell out of here that's the only kick that Rikers missed by the way is that block in preseason doesn't matter but George Harrison massively underrated like I actually have it in my well not not will but w- with my wife saying that at my funeral I want my sweet load played at my funeral and then also uh, warrant cherry pie, back to back, just throw people off. That's what I like to do. Also, what I like to do is respect Sling and Sam Darnold, aka America's quarterback. So this is a true homecoming game. Uh, he uh, born and raised so- Southern California, sa- went to high school San Clemente, just south of LA, and of course USC. Gonna be playing at SoFi, Inglewood, up to no good in front of a ton of friends and family, and. He really does have a chance to prove the haters and the losers wrong because they have been stacking up. Because even though he got off to that hard start, September NFC Offensive Player of the Month, uh, things have maybe cooled down a little bit. Although, I I know post-game is more frustration. uh, It was was a little harsh uh, on Darnold because the third and four as well as the interception was just terrible. But he actually had a pretty damn good game uh, against the Lions. But I think that he has a chance tonight against a... Sort of banged up Rams defense uh, to really put up some points and really do some damage. Especially since uh, kind of a homecoming game for Addison, too, one year at USC. Justin Jefferson loves the spotlight and has a chance to really light up this Rams secondary. So uh, I think Darnold's going to have himself a hell of a night tonight. Hmm. Also, hopefully we can put to bed all, all, all these stupid rumors of the Stafford trade. And, and Ben Lieber, uh, K-State alum. Go Wildcats. Uh, the 16 Wildcats rules for success or something like that. Um he had some good points about the the rumors and speculation. The whole Stafford trade seems extremely far-fetched to me. I don't think he's markedly better than Darnold at this point in his career. I'll just say it right now. R- right now, Darnold is better than Matthew Stafford. In, in a vacuum and also with this team. Because if Stafford came to the Vikings, he would have to get acclimated to the new offense. Even though, yeah, he's worked with Kevin O'Connell before. The offense isn't the same. As well as getting used to the weapons and all that stuff. Getting the timing and rhythm down. You can't just plug and play. This ain't Madden, bro. Uh, and I'll just say in a vacuum, Darnold is a better quarterback than Stafford right now. Uh, Stafford has been dealing uh, with some injuries over the last couple of seasons. As well as, yeah, he won the Super Bowl in 2021. Yeah, he was tough as hell for a number of years. But this isn't a lifetime achievement award, bro. Like, what can you do right now? And, yeah, Stafford, the bloom is sort of off the rose, right? Uh, 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 Lieber continued. Uh, the window to win is far greater than just this year. He has huge cap numbers left on deal. Well, you're going to have to sign him to a new contract if he stays, stays playing, but he's probably going to retire. All right, uh, This is McCarthy's team next year and beyond. And the window win is far greater than just this year, which, well, if there was a trade, I think it could be a one-for-one swap for Darnold and Stafford. Although, obviously, there's not a trade, and I don't even know if the Rams would be interested. Although, say Stafford retires and Darnold hits free agency or the Vikings decide to go the tag-and-trade route, I mean, the Rams would make a lot of sense for all the reasons we talked about. Like, Darnold being the SoCal kid, it's a bit of a, he's coming home to the place where he belongs. And also, I, I mean, you've seen what O'Connell, uh, what O'Connell has done with uh, with Darnold, and Darnold could probably do the same in a similar offense with McVay if McVay st- sticks around. Although, I still think that McVay 
steps away after this season and takes all the money from Amazon and does Thursday Night Football by himself. Kick kick Allen Herbstreit to the curb, and he just does it. It's like, it's like Gruden quarterback camp. Actually, kind of awesome. Yeah, but yeah, Darnold's not getting traded. Stafford still might get traded. I don't know, but where would you trade him to? Like the Dolphins would have made sense if they would have shut down Tua for the season, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, also, something I don't know uh, as a right meow, uh, if Reisner and uh, T.J. Hawkinson will be up for the game. So they're still on the respective reserve list. Uh, if they uh, the list as questionable on the final injury report, I don't know. Like, Hawkinson hasn't had a full spree practice since his 21-day window has been opened. Uh, he does have to be activated off of it tomorrow. Uh, otherwise, he ends up on season-ending pup list. And with Reisner, I mean, Reisner is listed as full participant. So I think that there's a better chance of him being up and activated uh, for tonight. Uh, but they'd have to make a decision during the day-to-day. So they'd have to make some 53-man roster moves as well as uh, they'll have to decide who's up from the practice squad. But I, I will... I think if Reisner's active, I don't know if he starts. All right, because Reisner hasn't had a, a full, uh, full-on practice uh, with the rest of the first-team offensive line, and that's something I think that they would want to have happen. But he could be activated and be the backup, and just in case Ingram falls on his ass, maybe Kobe Turner, uh, Turner does some really bad things, and then maybe you just toss in Reisner as uh, as a mid-game replacement. It's possible with Hawkinson. So it's noteworthy that the Vikings only have two tight ends on the 53 right now. Now, they could certainly uh, elevate Robert Tanyan, but also it's noteworthy that uh, Nikhil Harry was released from the practice squad. So raises an eyebrow. But, I mean, if Hawkinson goes tonight, you know, the question remains. Like, the Vikings didn't have any full practices or even a walkthrough uh, since Sunday. So could he have gone Sunday against the Lions when the Vikings certainly could have used a middle-of-the-field target like that third and four. Eh. Uh, but like I said, it, it is what it is. And they'll get back when they, they get back. And it's a long season. And, of course, we need them healthy for the stretch run. So, But when once they're ready, they're ready. Let's get after it. Mm. Uh, so wrapping up, I feel like Jefferson has himself a monster game. And I feel like him and the Anthony Edwards ESPN photo, it's fantastic. Him talking about he's sick of the 80, 90-yard games. I think he goes off tonight. Like, I think Darnold, Jefferson get themselves a big-time game. Like, I'm talking about 12 for 210 and 3. We would love that, man. Also, I think Derisaw erases Jared Burst. I think he erases Byron Young. I think that the edges are clean uh, for uh, for Darnold. Uh, I think Derisaw and Brian O'Neill continue their season of dominance. Also, I feel like Cam Beasy. So, Beasy did not have himself a good game uh, against the Lions. And, you know, got shook on the Gibbs touchdown coverage mm. uh, but I feel like Stafford's gonna get pressure the entire left side of the their offensive line is gonna get caved in I think Flores is gonna get a lot of heat on Stafford I think that Stafford uh, has a 41.7 quarterback rating uh, when he's under pressure I think that he's gonna serve up a couple meatballs I think that Beasley comes down with two comes down with two I think the Vikings get four total turnovers I uh, get uh, eight or nine sacks and they go from there also th- this is not a any aspersion on Aaron Jones I just feel like Ty Chandler's going to get a couple carries early. He's going to look hot, and the Vikings go with a hot hand. So it's nothing with Jones's hamstring slash hip slash ass. I, I think that Ty Chandler busts out and proves all the haters and the losers wrong. And also hangs on to the football. I think that he has a Bengals 2023 adjacent type game tonight. I don't know. I just got, got a weird feeling. Ty Chandler has himself a ball game. But uh, your thoughts are thoughts of Vikings versus Rams this evening. Vikings news dump on game day, Bay Bay. Uh, let us know, comment section. You guys know what to do. Skull, production value.